So the first one that we did, starting with the first one, uh, not this one. It was, uh, we started off with the general label, which is enthalpy change. So that's, that generally just applies uh, for any enthalpy change. You call it enthalpy change. It's the net energy evolved in the chemical reaction. If you're talking about the enthalpy change of reaction where there's a small R written and standard is, so that means you're measuring it under standard conditions. R means that uh, if you're calculating the enthalpy change of this reaction, then it has to be exactly four moles reacting with five moles of O2 to produce two moles of P2O5. So that's enthalpy change of reaction. Then we talked about enthalpy of formation, which is uh, when one mole of a substance is, or any, one mole of any substance is formed from its constituent elements and they should be in the standard state. So any, so it's the energy released or absorbed, it could be endo or it could be exo. So whenever there's one mole of a substance formed from its elements or like this NH3 that's being formed from its, uh, from nitrogen and hydrogen, then that is called enthalpy change of formation. The enthalpy change of that particular reaction is called the enthalpy change of formation of NH3. So just remember, they're not going to give you these reactions. They'll just give you this. They'll just tell you enthalpy of formation of NH3 is minus 88. You have to figure out yourself what the reaction is. Uh, so they'll just assign these labels. Then we had the enthalpy change of combustion. It's always exothermic because obviously it's a, it's a combustion reaction. And uh, it's only for those reactions where a spontaneous reaction happens with oxygen, which you call combustion. Uh, if it's not a spontaneous combustion reaction, then if it's only a reaction with O2, that's not called enthalpy of combustion. Now, it's the energy release when one mole of any substance is, is burned in excess oxygen under standard conditions. If it's a not on top of it, so one mole of hydrogen burning, that's enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen. One mole of ethanoic acid burning, that's enthalpy of combustion of ethanoic acid. One mole of sulfur burning, that's enthalpy of uh, combustion of sulfur. What you should know is what are the products going to be. Like in this case, just remember I, did, I told you yesterday, for sulfur, it's not SO3 that's going to be formed, it's SO2. Now, moving on, uh, I also told you that, uh, that I also told you that enthalpy of formation of elements is always zero. Why? Because you don't have to form elements. Like if, if you want to know the enthalpy of formation of nitrogen, one mole of a substance has to be produced from its element, which is also nitrogen. So you don't have to do anything. So that's zero. And the enthalpy of combustion of uh, substances that have already combusted, their enthalpy of combustion is zero because carbon dioxide, you can't burn carbon dioxide. A reaction of carbon dioxide with oxygen would produce carbon dioxide. So um, nothing is happening. Enthalpy of combustion of water would be zero. So enthalpies of combustion of the products of combustion reaction is zero because they're not going to burn. And I also told you that uh, reactions can be assigned multiple labels. For example, this reaction has a particular enthalpy change. Uh, you can call this enthalpy change the enthalpy of combustion of carbon because one mole of carbon is being burnt in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. But you can at the same time give it another label uh, and you can call it the enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide where one mole of carbon dioxide is formed from its elements. So both of these would mean exactly the same thing. So remember, enthalpy changes of reactions can be assigned or given multiple labels. Uh, we did standard enthalpy change of neutralization for simply a reaction where an acid and a base react. And the condition is that one mole of water must be produced. So it doesn't matter what acid, what base are reacting. As long as one mole of water is produced, that would be called enthalpy of neutralization. And I told you that enthalpy of neutralization is uh, usually always the same value for strong acid and bases. Uh, why? Because usually the reaction is going to be exactly the same. The acid uh, releases the H plus one ion, the base releases the OH ions. Uh, the reaction that's happening is H plus one reacting with OH ions and it's producing water. So it doesn't really matter where the H plus one is coming from, whether it's coming from HCl or HNO3 or H2SO4 or H3PO4. The acid is only contributing the H plus one ions and the base is contributing the OH ions. So it doesn't matter where the OH ion is coming from. NaOH or KOH, the other lines are just spectator lines. Uh, so HCl, uh, if you use HCl, the Cl minus one is pretty much not doing anything. So it's always the same reaction, which is why it's always the enthalpy chain is always the same. The only thing is uh, in this case is that uh, for weak acids, 
the value is slightly less. And I told you that uh, some slightly less exothermic because they don't ionize. So some energy, because HCl, I mean, you do, like if you have HCl aqueous, you don't have to break the HCl bond because that's already broken. HCl is a, a very strong acid. Would just time a solution bana tha na, uh, time it, it was already in the form of H plus one and Cl minus one in the associate form. So you were not you were not breaking this bond. But uh, if it's a weak acid, some energy is spent in ionizing the acid or the base. Ionizing uh, the acid because it's a weak acid or the base. Uh, for example, if you have uh, ethanoic acid, now that's a weak acid. So ethanoic acid doesn't really produce H plus one ions. It doesn't produce H plus one ions readily. So I mean, you have to you have you have to sort of give it some energy in the form of kinetic energy so that collisions happen more vigorously, so that somehow these bonds are broken and the H plus one is released. So bond breaking is endothermic. Now in HCl, you, don't, you didn't have to break the bond. The bond was already broken when it, um, so it came in the form of H plus one and Cl minus one aqueous ions. Ethroic acid, you have to kind of dissociate it. So some energy is spent in ionizing the acid. I mean, you would probably, if, if it's ethroic acid reacting, the reaction would probably not go to completion until you heat it. So that the ethanoic acid molecules they break down and they produce H plus one ions. Only then would the H plus one and OH ions react to produce water. So for weak acid, the value is slightly less exothermic because some energy gets consumed. Is this part clear? Yes or no? Is this clear? Now. Moving to the next part, another enthalpy change definition, and that is another important one, and that is enthalpy change of atomization, standard enthalpy change of. So standard enthalpy, one second. So it's standard enthalpy change of atomization. Now in this, uh, what's uh, so the symbol is delta H and there's going to be a small 80, a small 80 usually not make it kind of smaller. So small 80 uh, is written. Sometimes it's 80 OM that's written, but usually it's just A and T. Uh, now, enthalpy change of atomization standard, so not on top, uh, and it's always, always positive. It's always positive, it's always endo. Now, as the name suggests, you're making atoms. So it's the energy needed to form one mole of gaseous atoms. So to form one mole of, I said, remember, uh, when we say gaseous atoms, it doesn't mean, when we say gaseous atoms, when you have broken all the bonds between atoms, uh, that is when the substance is always in gaseous state. I mean, if you have a bunch of atoms and they're bonded to each other, then obviously uh, they are attracted to each other. It's not, and they, they would be a, they, there would be some form of attraction between them. So they're not going to be in gaseous state. But once you have broken all the bonds and the atoms are far away from each other, then those single atoms, because they're not interacting with anyone, they would be in gaseous state. They would be free to move around. If this wants to go here, it's going to go there. No one is stopping it. Uh, so remember what we, whenever we talk about gaseous atoms in these definitions, it simply means that you have broken all the bonds. So it's energy uh, needed to form one more of gaseous atoms from the element in its standard state. So 
from the element in its standard plane. And it's going to be measured under standard conditions. Measured. Under standard So uh, in this reaction, this is any reaction that produces one mole of gaseous atoms from the element. And the element has to be in its standard state. Uh, so for example, uh, there's a symbol given that enthalpy of atomization of oxygen, nitrogen, let's say. Enthalpy of atomization of nitrogen is provided. And you're given a value which is uh, which is let's say um, just a random value. Let's call call it 500 kilojoules per mole. So what reaction is he talking about? The reaction that he's talking about is uh, this is the enthalpy of the reaction in which one mole of nitrogen gaseous atom is formed from its element. Uh, and the element has to be in standard state. But what's the state of nitrogen under standard condition? It's going to be, it's going to be N2. Uh, now this has to be kept as one mole. So you need one mole of gaseous atoms from its element, which is this one. So to balance this equation, this should be half, right? So this is in, so the enthalpy change of this reaction, whatever the reaction is, so the enthalpy change of this particular reaction is going to be called the enthalpy change of atomization of nitrogen. So it's the reaction in which one mole of nitrogen is produced from its element in which it exists at room conditions. So one mole atoms, gaseous atoms have to be produced. Uh, so this is enthalpy of atomization of nitrogen. Uh, and it's always endothermic. Well, why is it always endothermic? Because you're breaking bonds. I mean, to form bonds, uh, to form atoms, you break bonds. And breaking bonds is endothermic. It requires energy. So it's always, always endothermic. Uh, let's do another example. Let's say I have enthalpy of, uh, enthalpy change of atomization of, uh, so that's, this is example one. Now example two is, I, uh, they're talking about enthalpy of atomization of iodine just one single ID. And the value that's provided is, let's say 298, 288 kilojoules per mole, hypothetical value. Uh, so this is given. So what reaction is he talking about? He's talking about the reaction in which one mole of iodine gaseous atom is formed. So one mole of iodine gaseous atom is formed from its element. The element under standard conditions, room temperature, iodine, as an element exists as a diatomic I2 molecule and it's a solid. And this has to be half because I have to keep this as one mole. So the enthalpy change of this reaction is going to be called the enthalpy of atomization of iron. And similarly, you can uh, pretty much uh, do enthalpy of atomization of any element. Uh, the enthalpy change of atomization of, uh, let's say, sodium would be. Uh, that is going to be called, what reaction is this? This is the reaction which one more of sodium gaseous atoms are formed from its element. So what is the element? It's metallic sodium. So what you're basically doing is uh, you're breaking the metallic bonds in sodium. I mean, initially, so you're breaking the metallic bonds in sodium. Right, so uh, that's how uh, that's this is enthalpy of hydrogenation. Is this clear to everyone? Yes or no? Uh, is this clear? Now, uh, now the next thing is that you have now this is enthalpy of hydrogenation. Now the next thing is that you have uh, a few more things. One is that if an element has strong bonds, 
اچھا پہلے تو نوبل So that, that's fairly obvious. It, so you, you're not even breaking any bonds. So enthalpy of atomization for, uh, would be equal to zero. Uh, they're monoatomic, monoatomic gases. And absolutely no bond needs to be broken to form atoms. So you're not, you're not breaking any bonds. Okay, so that's, that's noble gases. Uh, the next is, uh, the next point about this is, if the element has strong bonds, then there's going to be larger delta H atomization. Okay, so, the, so it's obviously it's, it's going to require a lot of energy to break those bonds. Uh, so one example is okay, nitrogen over here has very strong bonds. N triple bond N is very strong, so it's very it's going to be very hard to break these uh, bonds into and form these atoms. So the enthalpy of atomization of nitrogen is going to be pretty high. Neither man have seen any such value like TV, but it's going to be pretty high. Uh, So how do you figure out which one has strong bonds and which one has, which element has weaker bonds? One way is, uh, one rule is rule of thumb. That is smaller atoms. We'll do this in chemical bonding later as well. Smaller atoms, they make stronger bonds. So whenever you have smaller atoms, they're always, they're always making stronger bonds. Uh, the explanation is that they're closer together. And plus, uh, nucleus is less shielded. Like the biggest problem with bigger atoms is uh, they can't really attract the outer electrons that strongly. So the closer together, nucleus is less shielded. For example, if you have uh, fluorine and the two fluorine bonded together and there are nine protons in the, in the fluorine nucleus. Now the nucleus is very exposed because it's not really covered by electrons or that many electrons. There's just nine electrons. Think of iodine with 54 electrons. So it's got the nucleus doesn't uh, so I mean, they're going to attract each other and they're going to bond with each, each other and they would be very close to each other. The, the bonding is the attraction. It's the shared electrons that are getting attracted by the two nuclei. Both nuclei would be, both nuclei, <coughs> this one over here and this one over here would be attracted to the shared electron. So smaller the atom, the stronger would be the bond and they would be closer together. So that's one rule of thumb. Or agar ye nahi pata, So you can also check bond energies. Okay. That's another one, which is, or check bond energies. It's good for a bit of foreign bond. I ain't give you or check bond energies in the data book. It's going to be the value. The you get bond for negative energy. It is a year. So check bond energies in data booklet. This is the next thing we're going to do after the definitions. Uh, so always, always check bond energies from the data booklet. We'll, we'll come to that later. As a moving on, we're done with enthalpy change of atomization. The next thing is, well, the only thing you have to remember is always endothermic and stronger bonds, then it's obviously going to be a bigger value. The next one is, as so the next one is, Uh, 
in thalpy chain of solution. Now these usually don't, I mean, they're not important in AS. In A2, they're very important, but not as important. I guess rule like not as important. Okay. This is the first time that they are very important in AS. Now this is standard enthalpy. Change of solution. Now, as the name suggests, uh, it's simply a substance that is, I mean, a dissolving a substance. So it's, and it could be endo or, or exo. It's, I mean, you're not sure. It, I mean, it depends. It varies from substance to substance because in this case, it, it involves both bond breaking and bond formation. I'll explain to you how do things dissolve. So they, it involves both bond breaking and bond formation, which is why uh, it could be, it could go either way. If bond breaking requires a lot of energy, then it's, it's going to be highly endothermic. If uh, bond breaking is less endo, and the bonds that it forms with water or the solvent, that's a solution. When we talk about solution, we're talking about, about an aqueous solution. Okay, whenever you talk about enthalpy chain of solution, so you're not dissolving it in ammonia, you're dissolving it in dissolving it in water. So enthalpy, standard enthalpy change of solution. Now this one is definition pelle. Uh, it's the energy evolved or released or absorbed. When One mole of uh, of any solute uh, completely dissolves to form a dilute solution. or to form an infinitely dilute solution. That term simply means that there's too much water added. Uh, okay, if the solution is very concentrated, so uh, you might start getting uh, crystallization happening. You don't want to do that. You just want to dilute it. You want to make it into a solution. So it's energy released or absorbed in one mole of a solute completely dissolves to form an infinite dilute solution. And uh, this is going to be measured under standard conditions. So it's going to be measured under standard conditions. Uh, so one mole of any solute, one NaCl solid, it's going to be mixed with water. So you're going to write aqueous over here. TK, the, so that imaginary uh, container full of water, that would be written as aqueous. You put NaCl into that container, and NaCl becomes aqueous. Uh, you can also write it in the form of dissociate form. You could have written it as Na plus 1 aqueous. Ionic compounds always dissociate, but this is not limited to ionic compounds. It's, it could be any compound. Any compound, as long as it is one mole that's dissolving. So as long as it's one mole. So one mole of any uh, solute. So for example, you have ethanol, which is liquid. You mix it in water and you get ethanol, which is aqueous. So that is also, now ethanol would not dissociate. Ionic compounds usually, we can write a point. So ionic compound, it dissociates when you dissolve it. As a first thing about this is uh, what is solubility and uh, why do things uh, why do things uh, dissolve in the first place? Uh, now the solubility is, uh, quickest explanation, 
uh, water is polar. So our solvent is water at the moment. Water is a polar molecule, so water. Hence, it attracts and mixes with So hence, it, it attracts and mixes with polar compounds. I mean, polar compounds simply means that things that have charges on them. Uh, so you have uh, ethanol. So why does ethanol mix with uh, water? Because ethanol can form hydrogen bonds, although we haven't studied this. Uh, this O and H bond is highly polar. H is partial positive, O is partial negative, and the water molecules are going to get attracted to them. And water is also highly polar. H is positive. O over here has a partial negative charge, so they attract each other, which is why, oh yeah, so which is why they're going to mix with each other. So anyways, uh, so the thing is, uh, so the thing is, whenever one mole of a substance is dissolved, uh, the enthalpy change or whatever energy change that's involved, that would be called the, uh, it would be called the standard enthalpy change of solution. Uh, it would be called the standard enthalpy change of solution. Actually, now it involves both bond breaking and bond formation. Now, the first thing is, why bond breaking? Like if you have ethanol, the problem would be that, let's assume that the water is not here. Okay, okay water is separate. And now if water is separate, then the water molecules are kind of grouped together and they're all attracting each other. Right, O has lone pairs, this is negative, and they are both attracted to each other. So initially, Initially, you just had water, and water molecules were all attracted to each other. And you had the solute particles. Solute particles, you had ethanol molecules. Uh, I can put this together just to simplify. This is C2H5. Or we can call it CH3CH2. And so you had a bunch of ethanol molecules, and they were also attracted to each other because there was nothing else. Whenever you dissolve, you always need to do one thing, and that is you need to stir. Okay, why do you need to stir? Because the solute particles over here, uh, they are the thing that you're trying to mix, one mole. They're all attracted to each other, and the water molecules are all attracted to each other. So the first thing that you would do is you would have to break these bonds. Where would the energy come? The energy comes from stirring. So you give it energy. So that's the first part. The first part is always endothermic. So when you start to vigorously stir it, your molecule, it would fly away. It would, it would go in different directions. And you're stirring it. This one also starts to, so they mix up. Now, when they, when they mix up, then the next part would be they would start attracting the negative part of uh, Oxygen over here is going to get attracted to the positive H. So they're going to get attracted. And similarly, uh, these two might get attracted to each other. So the H might get attracted to the lone pairs. And they can, they can get attracted. So new bonds would be formed. And they would rearrange themselves in a new way. So it, it involves both things. You have to break the old bonds first. So that is why you stir. And then you have to make these new bonds. So again, new bonds are So it You have to, I mean, they have to attract each other. So polar molecules, they always attract other polar molecules. Uh, so it involves both things. You have to break the bond and then form new bonds. Uh, sometimes breaking bonds becomes very difficult. For example, if you're trying to dissolve an ionic compound like calcium carbonate, so it has calcium two plus and carbonate two minus, which is an ionic lattice, and it's a very strong ionic lattice. So, so this is marble. 
अब इसमें क्या होगा नीचे पानी भी पड़ा हुआ है इसमें इशू ये होगा कि इवन इफ यू स्टर इट वेगरसली द लैटेस्ट वुड डिसोसिएट बट इट वुड रिक्वायर अ लॉट ऑफ एनर्जी मार्बल इज इज वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग आई मीन द आयन वुड स्टार्ट अराउंड इन वाटर कैल्शियम टू प्लस कार्बोरेट टू माइनस एंड सो ऑन but uh that is going to be highly endothermic it's a very strong ionic lattice and it won't break or it would be matlab bahut zor se chamach lani padegi but that even that would not be possible so highly endothermic which would make the whole process endothermic the whole enthalpy of solution would be endothermic so is pe main bas do cheeze add kar do can we talk about the standard enthalpy change of solution endothermic ka matlab hai ki usse dissolve nahi hona it's not going to it's not going to dissolve so we can add that over here and that is that if enthalpy of solution is endo then it's most likely not soluble or it's going to be soluble if you give it a, give it a lot of energy and the other one is if enthalpy of solution is if it has your solution is exothermic then it's most likely to be more likely to be soluble which means that it's going to be soluble and it's also going to be more soluble at low temperatures you get producing energy so if you're if you're taking away energy at low temperature then it's going to be more soluble ये सारा क्लियर है 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 इज क्लियर अच्छा नाउ द नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज कि दिस इज इंथाल सोल्यूशन वी डन विद इंथाल सोल्यूशन उसके बाद वी हैव फ्यू मोर which are also not that important there is uh as so there is enthalpy change of hydration of gaseous ions so this is standard theek hai again this is also more important in nato क्वेश्चन आ जाएगा डेफिनेशन के ऊपर अदरवाइज नॉट एनी मेजर क्वेश्चन फोकसिंग जस्ट ऑन दिस स्टैंडर्ड एंथाल्पी चेंज ऑफ हाइड्रेशन ऑफ कैशियस आइंस नाउ दिस वन इज that but one mole gaseous ion any ion random ion pick any one you put it in water and it becomes aqueous that's it aur iske to bond hi ban rahe matlab wo toot to koi bhi nahi uske bond to pehle hi toot gaye sare to bas pani mein ja ke bonds form hi kar raha hai so it's it's always always exo so only bond formation taking place so only bond formation is taking place over here and uh as is is key definition is the energy it's always released energy released when one mole of 
gaseous ions are completely surrounded by water molecules. Are completely surrounded by So they're completely surrounded by water molecules and uh, so energy release from one mole of gases are completely surrounded by water molecules to form one mole of aqueous ions. To form one mole of aqueous ions, that's it, measured under standard conditions. I see, sorry. Uh, so it's just one mole of any random ion. We put it in water and it forms an aqueous ion. Okay, so you're basically just dissolving it. I see, sorry, uh, uh, just let me quickly confirm that lattice energy is not going to be the latest in the list. 2021. This all on ones. Okay, yeah, this is the twenty twenty one syllabus. Uh, definitions give us this take the Fadi Clay. Is the other clear? Is this clear? Okay, lattice energy is not there. Uh, bond energy is there. The rest of them are formation, combustion, hydration, solution, atomization. So we're done with most of them. Uh, bond energy is there. Okay, and uh, bond energy we go to the bond energy. The first thing we have to do is we have to do this worksheet. Okay, I'm going to send you this worksheet. Or uh, the first thing would be you just have to practice. Okay, you think it is thrown at you. If you if you're given enthalpy of formation of CH4, so uh you have a post uh, there's the MCQs as well at the end and theory questions as well. But this worksheet can be theory questions be sorry. Uh, so these are all related to enthalpies of the enthalpy change definitions. Now the first one. Uh by the way, there should be enthalpy of formation of CO2. Now, what is enthalpy of formation of CO2? The one mole CO2, one mole, sorry, CO2, you know, one mole CH4 must be formed from its constituent elements. The elements are carbon and hydrogen. And they must be in the standard state. Standard state ka matra, carbon is going to be a solid, hydrogen is going to be H2 gas. Or EB standard state, known as E gas. Uh, but ye one mole rakne, so you have to keep this as one mole. So ye, but this reaction ki enthalpy change. Enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide. What is that? One mole of carbon dioxide is going to be produced from its. It's going to be produced from its elements, which are carbon, solid, and you have O2, which is gas. So, is reaction the enthalpy change? I say enthalpy of formation of Al2O3, which is one mole of Al2O3, would be formed from its constituent elements, which are two aluminiums. And it's a solid metal at room temperature, and they're going to be three by two, three by two, or two oxygen molecules. It's go one mole right and it's going to be a solid. So this reaction to enthalpy change, you know, when one mole of aluminium oxide is formed from its constituent elements, that would be called the enthalpy of formation of aluminium oxide. Or you will be called the enthalpy of formation of copper sulfate. So it's going to be one mole of copper sulfate that has to be produced from its elements, which are 
In this case, it's going to be copper plus sulfur plus uh, oxygen. So solid, EB solid, hai. oxygen is a gas, it's put two, so multiply bhi kar lo. Plus wo aqueous cover, so to aqueous cover, so usko unko pani bhi dal lo. So one mole of copper sulfate aqueous is produced from its elements. Is this clear? Uh, Riba Hida is uh Hiba Veda is this clear? I see ye salana ye to ye complete karna tika. This would be your assignment. In ko labeling karlet and this is ki labeling kya hogi. What would you call this? Uh what would be the name given to the enthalpy change of this reaction? Uh you can't call this combustion of hydrogen, because hydrogen peroxide ni bantha also water bantha tika. So so you can't call this combustion of hydrogen, but you can call it the enthalpy of formation of H2O2. The enthalpy change is the energy release or the name of the name of the What would you call this? This is also uh, a compound is being formed from its elements. So this is enthalpy of formation of NaCl. They can two times, because enthalpy of formation is one NaCl. Banega. So this is twice that. Achha, phir ye kya? Ye enthalpy of solution hai. If it's a four solid salt, ko dala hai, wo pani ke mix ho gaya. So this is enthalpy change of solution of FeSO4. Uh, ye enthalpy change of hydration of sodium ions hoga. This would be the combustion. You're burning it in oxygen. So this thing is it. Uh, you will you'll, you'll, you'll be asked questions on this, on definitions. So you have to complete this assignment. This may help with any problematic. I get MC is going to open a Greek class when the professor uh, discuss the game. A key MC to run the thing. He in how we change of neutralization a base acid base reaction. And what did I tell you? It always has the same value. So, if you have two reaction, you can use the two moles of water produced. And if you have two moles, if the second one also has two moles of water being produced, then that means uh, they're going to have the same value. Minus 114. What did I wrote? I wrote down minus 57. Like in that was for one mole of water. Because there are two moles of water being produced, so the value is double that. Uh, but two of the water are also being produced in this reaction, so both of them are going to have exactly the same value. So he's asking for the enthalpy change of this reaction, so it's going to be exactly the same, same value. And this is why I was mentioning plus and minus because they ask you very frequently, okay, which one is plus, which one is minus, etc. So uh, the answer to this is going to be B. I told you that when you're forming atoms, you're always breaking bonds, so it's always endothermic. Uh, formation, I told you it could be both. Solution, I told you it could be both. I wrote down reasons for that as well. So try and go through this worksheet. Do you have any questions about this? Heba, are there any questions? Clear, Sara? I'll, I'll post this assignment uh, tonight and uh, uh, try and go through this. Okay. complete for me. Or pista can't they complete it? Okay, take care. Allah first.